This is Europe's first stretch robot in a DHL warehouse. And this is me trying to understand how it operates, with help from this expert who knows it better than I know Gen Z brain rot memes. But Stretch is just one of several robots we will meet today, and some of them operate in ways you wouldn't expect. Let's say you order sunglasses online, you want them delivered fast, right? This is where robots can help. But how exactly do these robots function, and what is it like working with them? More importantly, how can we rank them? Today we are traveling to the UK and spending a day with robots to answer these questions, starting with our first robot, these little fellas. Definitely not an S tier. Okay, it's time to get serious. Welcome to the future, aka Coventry in the UK, where one of DHL supply chain's most advanced and newest warehouse is located. So, what is our plan today? We're gonna spend an exciting day together with robots. We're gonna meet also the people who work alongside them. And we're gonna explore a little bit about the technology we use in these DHL facilities. So join us for this journey. It's gonna be exciting. And without further ado, let's go. Come. Let's meet our second, well, technically our first robot, the 6RS or Chuck, the six river system robots, which we use in this warehouse to help our colleagues in their work basically. And this one is called Whitney. Nice to meet you, Whitney. She technically said hi, so I don't know if I've been ghosted. This robot is helping our colleagues in the picking. Basically, what it does, it goes through these shelves and then it indicates which item should be put into which box. And then the colleagues scan the item and the colleagues know where should they put the item? And this facility is not the only one with these robots. We have over 750 assisted picking robots and over 2,000 robots in total across our sites in the UK, Ireland and the EMEA region. Did we come from there or...? I think we got lost. <laughs> and now let me introduce you to some of our colleagues. Meet Hendrix, Dolly, Slayer. Can I just say like that's a pretty cool name? Vam, Riri and of course Quimby. And since all of these robots have names here, how would you name these two robots? I would say Frederick. Frederick? Yes, I know, random. Frederick and Lucas. Lucas. There you go. Two names. Here we go. Frederick and Lucas. Frederick and Lucas. <laughs> Thank you so much. No worries. And in this warehouse, we are using a lot from these 6RS or Chuck robots. They are helping our colleagues. And I give it an S tier. And now it's time to meet our next robot. We just found out that there is another robot helping us in this warehouse. That's right, meet the wrapping robots, basically the pros of packing. They speed up the stretch wrapping process, help protect products from damage and even save on plastic waste. And the cool part, they've got different wrapping styles, so even weirdly shaped items can get wrapped up safe and tight. They are definitely S tier, if you ask me. But before we move on to the next robot, in this room we have 20 3D printers and all that stuff that was printed using these 3D printers. And yes, I counted them myself. Wow, look, look at this. Look, look, there is an octopus. Hello, I'm a 3D printed octopus and I hope you enjoy watching this video. I think it's, re I think it's really cool. And subscribe. This place was so interesting, I had to find out what it actually is. All right, so I'm here with Steven, and would you mind telling us what you're doing here actually, and what is this place, because it looks absolutely amazing. I look after everything that goes on within these four walls. Problems that we've solved in the past are packing advent calendars, packing Easter egg. This is an Easter egg packing machine. So this was a one-off bespoke made for a high-end chocolate manufacturer. Why do we have 20 3D printers at DHL? As I said before, a big part of what we do is rapid prototyping, quick turnaround, getting things in, designed and out as quick as we possibly can. And a big part of that is 3D printing. So they give us the ability to come up with an idea, cut it up in the day, print it overnight, test it the next day, which with old fashioned manufacturing, like subtractive manufacturing processes, that whole process might take a week or more. We're able to condense that down into quite often a 24 hour period. So if anybody would be interested in these kind of stuff, what would you say to them? Like what kind of skills does one need in order to work on these in these areas or for example here? You've got to have the interest. You've got to have the passion to want to understand how everything works on a basic level. Meeting Steven was super cool, but it was time to move on because the next robot was already waiting for us. If you thought we're only gonna visit one site today, you were wrong. Welcome to DHL East Midlands Gateway Keg. Eat, eat, 
Kegwer, excuse me, where, where, where are we? Can you help oh, me? So we're at DHL East Midlands Kegwa. Ah, okay, exactly that. Yeah. Let's go in. We are here inside and we have Lee with us today. Uh, so Lee, if you could tell us what you do here at DHL. This is Perkins Engines aftermarket site. We pick and pack parts for worldwide distribution, predominantly for engine parts, for distribution to hospitals, tractors, all sorts of weird and wonderful air conditioning units, a multitude of different things. That's super cool. And I can already sense you have some interesting robots inside. Absolutely. So let's go check them out. Lovely. How many people do you work with? Uh, so we've got 130 people based here currently. We're in a slightly lower period of our volume. We tend to see a little bit less work um, when it comes through to the summer. However, as you can see from the size of the building and the amount of products we have, it's pretty much a busy, a busy warehouse operation. That is crazy. That is like huge. If anybody would like to join, for example, what kind of skills or what are you looking for for your team, for example? So the, the really we're looking for two key fundamentals when we're going through our onboarding process. Throughout the onboarding process, everybody's trained to a certain standard and that goes through excellent school, allowing them to come out, touch and feel the products and the job role itself, but also to give us feedback about if the, the role is suitable for them. More importantly, what we're looking for is mindset. Mindset is really, really important to us. We're a fast moving, quite fast paced operation which means they have to have a team mindset they have that team mindset what that gives us is the ability then to ensure that our product flow and our people are working in tandem to ultimately deliver for our end customer listening to Lee talk about team spirit kind of made me want to apply for a job here but then something totally stole my attention oh I, I can already see them and just like that the locust robots enter the scene So if you would have to explain why are we using the Locust robots and what are they doing to help us to become more productive? So from a Locust robotics perspective and certainly from a customer perspective, one of the real key things and drivers of using this type of equipment is productivity based increases. By having the robots do pretty much the legwork for us by going to pick location, it allows our operatives to look for the flags interact with the robot and then move to the next robot. The robot then does all the legwork and goes to the next location and another operative may interact with it. By the time two or three people have interacted with the robot, the order is complete. So instead of walking all the way up and down aisles, we're walking all the way up and down looking for flags. Half the amount of walking, more productivity, quicker products out of the door. The other part of it is and a real major part of it, certainly from our colleague interaction, is that there's no push-pull with the Locust robot. So the health and safety benefits from using this type of, of uh, industry standard operational piece of kit means that we're seeing minimal, uh, a minimalistic number or zero health and safety incidents in regards to this area. How does the Locust robot know where to go and what to pick and uh, how can they like... So part the of quality? the Locust software, the Locust robot is constantly reading the guides on the bottom of the, the stanchions mm -hmm. of each and every aisle. So it, at all times it knows where it is and what it needs to do. It is this self it self propels, it, it, it self controls, it, it basically does all the legwork for us. They also have different colors, like do they have different meanings? They do, yeah, so the, the, the lights on them, we classify them as eyes, they're locust robots, the, the, eyes. Uh, the eyes, yeah. And the eye colors mean different things. So when it's flashing blue, it means that it's ready to go, it's ready to go out. When it's flashing green, it's awaiting. It's waiting for somebody to come and interact with it. When it's flashing red, it means it's still an idle. When it's flashing purple, it means it needs a bit of its own health check and it comes along and puts itself on charge. Well, I guess that's it for Locust Robot. Locust Robots, definitely S tier. And yeah, all the best. Thank you very much. Can you like, yay. <laughs> The Locust robots were super cool, but before we knew it, it was time to head back to the first site for the big finale. And now it's time for the grand finale. Meet the stretch robot. But let's ask someone who knows way more about these robots than I do. Okay, so it's nice to meet you. If you could tell us more about what you do inside DHL. I lead digital transformation in DHL supply chain globally and work with 188,000 of our associates across the world and lots of robotics like this one. Boston Dynamics robot, Stretch, so to say. Could you tell us more a bit about how this robot works and how it contributes to our operations? My pleasure. So Stretch is a mobile robotic arm 
on a mobile base, so we can actually um, drive it around. It can drive um, also by itself, and it has a um, smart gripper to handle cases. Yeah, so. Um, if we look um, over here, we see like a pallet and what we did here today is we used stretch to unload that pallet, depalletize onto a conveyor belt. And um, what we use stretch for in reality already in DHL supply chain is for unloading of containers. So you can imagine a standard shipping container filled floor to ceiling with, with boxes and that is very labor intensive work to unload all of these boxes. So we use stretch to identify where the boxes are, unload them to a container and thereby relieving our human associates of a very physically demanding, error-prone and repetitive task. Why do we use robots in DHL and in the supply chain? Yeah, I think the first important point just is um, labor scarcity. So we need more people to also live up to our growth aspirations um, already in the past, but especially now with an ambitious um, target of doubling our business by 2030. So we need more people. And we don't want to have people working in um, conditions that I outlined before. So like in a very, you know, in winter, very cold container, very hot container, backbreaking work. So robots help us actually to focus our human labor on the activities we really need all the human skills we have, the dext dexterous tasks, the tasks that require uh, decision making and so on. And robots are an opportunity to build these mixed fleets of uh, workforce. So we have people working with technology, with robotics, with data and robots and people working together in harmony. So there you have it, the future of logistics with the stretch robot. As you might have guessed, it's an S tier. From the stretch robot unloading boxes to the 6RS and Locus robot speeding up the picking process and even our easter egg filling robots, it's clear that these things are changing how we do logistics. With all of them, our colleagues are able to work alongside cutting edge technology. By taking care of the repetitive tasks, robots free up time for our teams to focus on what really counts. Which is why we are continuing to invest in technology, training and partnerships. Thanks for joining us on this journey. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and who knows, maybe we'll see each other another time. Bye!